Hi guys and welcome to part 3 on this MX-5. So in this final part we're going to be going through the last bits and pieces that we need to get into paint to put back on the car for the last little bit of the rebuild. We're going through some of the rebuild work and obviously at the end of the video the final reveal on the car so you guys could see what it was like when it went out back to the customer. Um, we actually got the shots of this car the day before it headed back to John the customer. Um, he was very pleased with the car, um, came a long way actually to have this car done, it came all the way up from Swansea so for him it was like a four and a half hour drive to come and pick this up and obviously to bring it to us so it was quite a trip but um, as he said on the day he was quite pleased that he brought it all the way up to us and from what he said he's just planning on in the future having another car done with us as well. And if you have followed along with this series so far, then please do stay tuned all the way through the video. Watch it right till the end, then you see every little bit of the final part of this car and this little video series. Now, I have switched things up a little bit in this series and showed you guys a little bit more of the processes, like the flatting and the painting and the polishing and a little bit of the rebuilding and things like that. So if that's something that you guys would like to see more, a little bit more of a breakdown of the job, Maybe stretch a job over a little bit more um, parts, you know, like maybe make it four to five parts and start at the very beginning at the prep, the repair, the primer and work all the way through. Then let me know in the comments below what your theories and ideas are on that guys for the videos and I will do my best to try and incorporate some of that in future videos for you. So as I said, these are the final parts and if you follow along with the job, you know, um, in the first stage, we obviously got the shell painted and the doors we got them fitted back on then we got the bonnet and a few of the other bits and pieces done and now that all that's rebuilt and polished and back on the car we're going to finish off these last bits so now we can just literally get these polished up and bolt these to the shell i prefer to split up the painting in a couple of stages like this it makes it a little bit easier um not having too many painted parts lying around the shop um or sat around on stands whilst other parts are being worked on so as each stage gets painted the lad in the workshop can be obviously polishing the previous stage and getting those back on the car and getting that section of the car rebuilt whilst I'm in the booth doing the final prep and any final work on these bits and then getting these into paint. So when he's finished working on the bits that he's working on, he's then got a fresh set to go at. It just makes a little bit more streamlined in the shop. It makes it a little bit easier for him and it makes it a little bit easier for me as well. Also guys, still it turns out according to the YouTube stats that only around about 27% of you guys watching are subscribed. So please, if you do enjoy these videos and you're enjoying the series that we're doing and the in-depth tutorials that we do, then please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified of when we've got a new upload. Now in this part, on these sections that we're doing in the booth at the moment, the front bumper, the roof, the light um, covers and also the rear number plates around. We're doing these exactly the same as we've done on the previous stages. We're gonna be giving these three full wet coats. Again, the first coat is just gonna be a nice light coat concentrating on coverage around all the hard to reach areas. The second coat is gonna be another half a turn out on the fluid. And then the third coat is gonna be another half turn out again on the fluid again. So we finish up a full turn out on the fluid further than we did when we started. And as I said in the first video, the first coat is going down at around about 50% overlap just to give us a nice even coverage, but we're not going too wet so we're not risking the chance of runs. And then we're going to push it all the way up so the final coat is done with a nice 70% overlap. So we're getting it down really heavy and really wet. We can leave it a nice smooth finish that's really nice and easy to polish. And if you want to know how we've gone about polishing this car, then I will leave the link to part one and part two in the description below. Um, part two goes through the whole polishing stage and the way that we go through the polishing process on a car. And even the customer said when he actually saw this car that the videos and the pictures, as he put it, don't really do it justice to what when you see it in real life. Um, when this car's outside, um, even though it is, on, you know, it is on the little MX-5, it's not the world's most expensive repaint but it really has got that perfectly flat finish all over and it looks really nice, really crisp, really clean. And it's gotta be one of the cleanest Mark 1s that I've ever seen. Um, it was really clean when it came in as far as like um, rust and damage went, there was not a lot on it whatsoever. So to see this car now with a fresh coat of paint on it, it really does look like 
almost as good as new. Um, if the customer goes and weigh and does a few little bits, like a few little rubbers, a few little trim bits, and a few little bits and pieces, then the outside of this car really could look like brand new and it would be a really nice, stunning car for somebody. Now, paint-wise on this, we are using a 2K Direct Gloss. The way that I have got this mixed is I've got this 2 to 1 with paint to hardener, and then we're using 10% fast thinners um, through each coat, um, so all coats are mixed the same. And obviously, like I said before, you know, each coat I am going slightly heavier, so the heavier that I'm going, the slightly longer flow out that I've got on each coat. Now, I have left a small little clip in, a, um, in the second coat, that you guys can see of just what I mean by the difference in the flow out because although as we're spraying this on there is a bit of peel there because this is mixed quite thick and we are putting it down quite heavy after around about 10 20 I don't know maybe 30 seconds the paint will start to level and flat and flow out a little bit on its own um, just by gravity and just settling out on the surface of the panel to a slightly smoother finish and one question that I get asked all the time is, um, like I said in the last video, you know, how to get that perfectly flat finish or how to get the best finish. And you need really to learn your products more than anything. So the more that you use a product and the more that you play around with a product, the more that you can push the limits of a product. So something like this 2K gloss, if I go too careful and put it down too dry, then I'm going to end up with a really rough finish. If I really try and aim for that perfect off the gun finish, like as the paint's hitting the panel it's perfectly smooth the issue there is by the time it's flowed out it's going to start running so there's a fine line between learning where the right amount of paint is to actually put on so it's going to flow out to be a nice smooth service without putting too much on that it could possibly run um, and obviously you know the more that you use a product um, and obviously experience as well will teach you just how much product you can put down and you can alter this by putting a little bit of extra fluid out you could alter that by going a little bit slower with the gun or a little bit closer or further away with the gun all these things will affect the amount of product that you put down not only that but you can also alter it by how tight your overlap is so that's the reason why on this first coat i'm just going for a 50 percent overlap so it's not the smoothest finish in the world but it's a nice even coat that will give the next coat something to hit, adhere to and it's got that nice sticky surface and that nice tacky surface then that the next coat has got something to grip to so i can go that little bit wetter and that little bit wetter and that little bit wetter as i go through the coats gradually obviously again leaving the correct flash off times in the middle so we left around about 10 to 15 minute flash off time on this between coats and also I've gone um, for using the 1.2 XL setup in my DVR Aqua. I found this a really nice setup to use. I'm actually really quite enjoying using this gun at the moment um, on the gloss work on this. Um, so I might do, I might pop actually pop this into my DVR clear gun and the 1.2 XL setup and do a little review on that for you guys so you can see the difference between the 1.3 XL and the 1.2 XL and my thoughts between the two on what would be best obviously not only for the professional guys but also for the more DIY semi-professional guys as well so as you can see here as we're putting the paint down on this first light cover you can probably see there is a slight bit of peel to it now a lot of guys will be too keen to shoot for that perfect gun finish now it probably take me around about 30 seconds if that to paint this second light cover but as you'll see here in that 30 seconds that first one has already flowed out whereas the second one is still quite peely so don't get too hung up on what it looks like straight away as soon as the paints hit the panel you need to do a little bit of testing and get to learn your product and how much it'll flow and um, what mix you're using so say like on these because they're small parts i can use a fast hardener in these on the shell i'd probably use a standard hardener or if i did use a fast hardener i'd try and move really quickly to keep that nice wet edge around the panel as I was moving around the car and all these sorts of things will affect the amount of flow out including your thinner's choice whether you go for a slow or a medium or a fast everything will affect 
um, the flow out and how much the paint will flow out before it starts to tack off. And then obviously at the point where it starts to tack off, then the paint won't flow any more than that. And in the near future, that is probably something that I am going to be going through a little bit more when we get back onto the beginner videos um, in the next week or two. So as you can see on this second coat now, um, we're going a lot wetter than we were on the first coat. And then I've not included the footage for coat number three because obviously the painting stage on this video would probably end up a little bit too long and I don't want to bore you guys with too much painting. Although I know some of you guys like John, um, a channel member of ours, you love to watch the painting and you can sit here for hours and hours and watching me painting. But um, unfortunately it's not something that we can always do is leave a really long painting section in a video. But I will try and put some unedited long painting uh, on the member section of the channel soon for you guys as well. For those of you guys that do like to watch the longer unedited content if you will. Um, so you can see the whole paint from start to finish. But obviously on a job like this that might be something like 30-40 minutes of me in the booth painting. So as I'm trying to make these videos a little bit more of a story of the car from start to finish, I've included a few little bits of time lapse footage of some of the rebuild and some of the bits and pieces of putting the cars back together as well as obviously the rest of the work that we do because it gives you guys a little bit more of an idea of the work that we go through in the shop and just how involved some of these jobs are as far as stripping and rebuilding which can take as much time sometimes or more time than actually painting the car. Now, when I finished and completed all the actual paintwork side of the car and we've got it all rebuilt, we did go around and un put some under seal around all the arches on the front of the car, get everything nice and clean, nice and sealed back up and give it a nice fresh look under there and obviously give it a little bit of rust treatment as well. Now, anyone that knows these MX-5s knows that the rears on these are quite prone to rotting out. Luckily, the only one section was rotted out on this. Now, once we've done the welding work, we stone chip the inner arch, but we need to put some wax oil inside the rear sills. So we've put some black wax oil in an old underseal pot, and all these stone chip guns come with one of these tubes that you can use for injecting wax oil into sills. So I've included this little bit of footage and this little clip for you guys, so you can see just how we would go about this and injecting these freshly cleaned up and repaired sills um, and injected them all with wax oil to give them that little bit extra rust proofing. So we've taken out the bung on the inside of the rear arch there. You just get take the tube and pop it in the hole. We've got the warmed up wax oil in that pot and we can just pull the trigger now and shoot that in. Now the way these nozzles work is they don't shoot them out in a straight line, it shoots it out in like a cloud. So it comes out from all different directions so you want to make sure that you really get that tube in and chuck it around as much inside there as you can to really spread it about and really get the hole nice and full. Now, once we'd got the bung back in and all, obviously all the wax oil injected, we've then gone round all the back end and under sealed over the stone chip that we've already put on. And obviously we're putting this down for some extra rust protection around the back end. And then I just went under the back edge of the sills and along the bottoms of the edge of the floorboard as well we want to make sure that anything that obviously we have done is nicely sealed up and nicely rust protected before the customer has the car back 
and especially with it being an import MX-5, they don't come with any rust protection as standard, so we want to make sure that there's plenty there for when it goes back on the road. And for all you lovely viewers who have watched till the end of the video, I would love it if you'd go down to the description when this video is finished in a minute and join myself and Mick over on the Powder Coating channel, Unique Coatings, to see his second video that goes live today. So me and Mick will be live in the chat when his video goes live shortly. So that's it for this series on this car, guys. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Um, the only part that we didn't actually manage to fit to this car was the rear number plate. Um, surround because unfortunately it was the wrong surround so we're just waiting on a new one to come in and then we're going to ship that out to the customer so i hope you've enjoyed this series guys and i'll see you again soon for the next one bye for now